Think the ocean is the main source of plastic pollution? Think again. Rivers act like fast-moving highways, funneling millions of tons of waste straight into our seas. In this video, we'll break down how these water systems became the e-lifeline of global plastic pollution. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more insights, and join us as we trace the plastic trail upstream. 1. Rivers are plastic's fastest travel route. Rivers act like conveyor belts, carrying plastic waste from inland towns to distant oceans. Most plastic begins its journey far from the sea in markets, homes, dumps, or city streets. Rainfall and wind wash plastic into drains, streams, and canals that lead to rivers. Once inside, currents swiftly carry waste over hundreds or even thousands of kilometers. Rivers do not just hold plastic, they actively transport and redistribute it worldwide. A bottle dropped in one country can wash ashore halfway around the globe in months. Plastic often travels faster than official efforts to clean or contain it effectively. 2. Every major river carries plastic to the sea. From the Amazon to the Ganges, almost every large river now delivers plastic to the ocean. Even scenic rivers known for tourism or culture are riddled with plastic beneath the surface. Plastic waste enters upstream and drifts all the way to coastal deltas and estuaries. Larger rivers move thousands of tons of plastic every year into marine ecosystems. Most plastic is dumped far inland, but rivers make sure it does not stay there for long. Once inside a river system, plastic is hard to track and even harder to retrieve again. Monitoring river plastic has revealed shocking flows into global marine environments. 3. Rivers move all kinds of plastic waste. Rivers do not discriminate. They carry every type of plastic imaginable downstream. From microbeads to shopping bags, every form of plastic floats, sinks, or drifts in rivers. Some plastic flows visibly on the surface while others linger in deeper muddy layers. Fishing nets, plastic crates, bottle caps, diapers, and straws are all swept into rivers. They tangle in trees, catch on debris, or break down into particles within the water. Rivers stir this plastic soup constantly, helping it fragment into microplastic fragments. Many particles are too small to see, but still enter fish, birds, and human food chains. 4. Urban rivers are the worst offenders. Rivers flowing through cities collect plastic from millions of residents daily. Urban drainage, poor waste management, and illegal dumping feed rivers nonstop. In many cities, rivers double as garbage canals filled with every kind of household waste. Stormwater flushes tons of street litter directly into river channels with no filtration. Markets, factories, and slums near rivers use them as free and convenient dump sites. With no cleanup crews, this waste builds up and flows outward with the next rainfall. Even modern cities fail to intercept plastic before it reaches major riverways. 5. Plastic rivers feed the ocean gyres. Rivers do not just pollute the coast, they feed massive plastic islands in open ocean gyres. These gyres trap floating plastic into swirling masses that drift for decades or centuries. Rivers are the main contributors to these floating zones of plastic waste worldwide. Once plastic hits the ocean, it can no longer be traced or easily removed from the gyres. Researchers found that river-sourced plastic dominates most samples from ocean trash zones. These plastics move in a circular ocean pattern, never fully breaking down or sinking. River mouths serve as the input ports for this massive global waste circulation system. 6. Monsoon rivers worsen plastic pollution. During monsoons, river flow increases, but so does the volume of plastic waste discharged. Flooded rivers burst banks and pick up debris from fields, roads, and urban sprawl. Plastic that was buried, burned, or stockpiled suddenly enters fast-moving waters. In Asia and Africa, most river plastic enters the ocean during rainy seasons. Monsoon rivers act like high-speed freight trains for garbage and discarded plastic. Plastic is flushed into deltas, marshes, and coral reefs already under environmental stress. Wet season pollution peaks cause permanent damage to fisheries and marine wildlife. Cleanup efforts cannot keep up with the massive surge of seasonal plastic floods. 7. River plastic becomes food chain contamination. Plastic entering rivers does not stop at the water's edge, it enters the food web. Fish, crabs, and birds mistake plastic for food and ingest it unknowingly. 
Toxins from plastic leach into their bodies, causing disease, infertility, or death. Humans who eat river fish also consume these toxins and microscopic plastic particles. Plastic is found in freshwater mussels, river shrimp, and even drinking water sources. This turns rivers from lifelines into health hazards for nearby populations. Plastic-tainted rivers supply food and water to millions of people around the world. Rivers now deliver not just nourishment, but invisible contamination to communities. 8. River cleanup is logistically difficult. Cleaning rivers is much harder than removing plastic from land or shorelines. Rivers are constantly moving, making collection tricky, expensive, and time-sensitive. Trash booms clog easily and must be emptied frequently to remain effective. Boats and nets are limited by river depth, speed, and debris buildup in polluted zones. In tropical regions, dangerous animals, diseases, and muddy waters complicate cleanup. Crews risk exposure to pathogens, sharp objects, and chemical waste hidden in plastic. Most governments lack budget or training for sustained river plastic removal efforts. NGOs step in with floating barges, river robots, or manual teams, but cannot cover all rivers. 9. The rivers link land waste to marine destruction. Plastic dropped inland does not stay local. It finds a river and becomes a global problem. One piece of trash can journey from a small town to coral reefs thousands of miles away. Rivers are the essential bridge between land-based carelessness and ocean devastation. Without rivers, plastic might remain contained, but with them, it becomes unstoppable. This connection turns everyday litter into an international environmental hazard. Discarded plastic in one village can poison marine life in another continent's waters. Ocean treaties must acknowledge river pathways in their environmental protection plans. Plastic waste laws must begin inland, not just along the coast or marine parks. 10. Why rivers hold the key to ending plastic pollution. Rivers are both the problem and the solution to global plastic pollution today. They carry the majority of plastic into oceans, but they also offer points for intervention. If we trap plastic before it flows downstream, we can cut ocean pollution dramatically. Communities, cities, and nations must treat rivers as priority plastic control zones. Sensors, collection nets, filtration systems, and education must converge at riverbanks. Local action on rivers creates global impact far beyond what ocean efforts can achieve. A river cleanup in one country protects marine life across thousands of kilometers. Rivers are visible, accessible, and trackable compared to vast open ocean zones. If we do not act now, these highways will keep delivering destruction every day. Plastic is not a land problem or sea problem, it is a river problem first. Rivers may seem peaceful, but they're carrying the weight of our waste literally. Understanding their role in plastic pollution is key to fixing the problem before it reaches the ocean. Don't forget to like this video if it opened your eyes, subscribe for more powerful breakdowns, and share it with someone who needs to know what's really flowing beneath the surface.